Hello friends, this is Hedda. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another reading journal video. If this is your first time here, hello, my name is Hedda. I live in Norway. I keep a reading journal where I collect my thoughts on all the books I read. And every month I do a cover page and I write down the books that I read for that month. And then I make one spread for each book that I've read. We're gonna start with the cover page where I used this really pretty yellow, pink, orange sticker from Greta Lusky that I got with her art book that I talked about in my previous reading journal video. And I'm also going to use this frame from Leela Journals. I'm cutting it with scissors a little bit because this was actually uh, an oopsie, like a sticker sheet that had some minor flaws with it that she sent me for free with one of my orders. And I just wanted to cut it a little bit so that the cut lines would be a little bit more even. My idea for this cover page was to have decoration and the title on the left side of the spread and then have some frames with the books I read on the right side of the spread. I'm using a lot of frames in this spread because I decided to just make it full of frames. Some of them are from Leela Journals and they are stickers and then others are just paper ephemera that you guys have sent to me actually. So there's a good mix. I decided to have one big frame that will hold the sticker and then I put the sticker frames onto this washi paper from Paper Monogatari and cut them out to make smaller frames that just has that plaid pattern on the inside and I thought it would look really cute if I layered these frames kind of on top of each other. So the first thing I did was to just kind of prep that and I used a lot of the smaller frames from the Leela Journals stickers. She has a lot of really pretty frame stickers and I have both the rectangular and the oval ones and I think I'll need to get some more because they are really versatile and I've been enjoying using them a lot, especially in my reading journal. They've been really great. I read five books in May, so I knew that the right page would get filled up pretty quickly. So all of these little frames will just be some extra decoration kind of in the back. And combined with this plaid paper and the sticker from Gretlusky, I wanted to use some of the washi tape from the Golden Hour gift set from Notebook Therapy. It came out, I think, at least two years ago now, so I don't think that it's still for sale, but it's really pretty and it has all of these orange and pink purple hues and it went surprisingly well with the sticker from Gretlusky and I'm really pleased with that because I was struggling a little bit at first to find other stationery that fit with the sticker because it's such a unique color combination, I think, and it's really, really pretty. At first, I thought maybe I should go with more of a fish theme to go with the goldfish in the drawing but in the end I think just using similar colors was all I really needed to bring it together and it helps that the plaid washi paper is a very soft pink which doesn't really take away from the sticker or any of the other decoration it's just kind of neutral and there in the background so I'm very happy with that and when I'm looking at this spread now I'm just like I really love it it's probably my favorite reading journal cover page of the year so far so I said that I read five books in May but that's not actually completely true <laughs> because I am in Japan right now and I left on my trip uh, towards the end of May I had to film this video before I left and so the books included in this video are the books that I had finished or almost finished before I left so we have one novella, three novels, and one manga here in this video, and those are books I finished before I left. And some of them I actually started in April, but I didn't finish them until May, so that's how I'm able to have five books, even if it's not for the entire month, because usually I don't read this many books. <laughs> 
And also this might mean that my June reading journal update video will contain a lot of books because I've already read more books. <laughs> it was a long flight getting to Japan and my go-to when traveling far on an airplane is to listen to audiobooks. I can listen to an entire audiobook and do nothing else while I sit on the plane. I'll just turn on my noise cancelling headphones, close my eyes and listen to the book and that way I can rest my eyes and my head a little bit and just enjoy the story. A lot of the time when I fly I don't like watching shows and movies a lot because I, my head just gets so tired, my eyes just get so tired. So reading on my Kindle and also listening to audiobooks is my favorite way to pass the time on a plane and that also means I can get through an entire audiobook in just one day if I want to. <laughs> which definitely happened. To keep the right side of the spread a little bit more balanced, I decided that the bottom frame would be a rectangular frame so that it would span the entire width of the other frames. I thought that this was a very clever idea and I felt very pleased with myself. So this is what the cover page turned out like. I really, really like it. Like I said, it's one of my favorites this year. The first book I read in May was Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. I've read several of her other books and I really, really enjoyed them. I love her characters, the way she writes characters that aren't necessarily the good guys or they might turn into the bad guys and I expected nothing less from Yellowface. It is very different from the other books I've read from her because they've been fantasy like the Poppy Wars or Babel. So this one was very different but at the same time it definitely... I could, I could tell that it was written by R.F. Kuang if that makes sense because of the because of the characters. Nobody is likable in this book. <laughs> it's like... All of the characters have a lot of flaws and that's what makes it very interesting. And you don't really know who you can trust. If you can trust the main character, well, I mean, the main character. <laughs> this is a book with a lot of layers. As a, as a quick synopsis without spoiling anything, the book is about Juniper, who is an author, but she's not doing that well. Like she has one published book, but it's not really going anywhere. And then she has her friend who she isn't considering a good friend. She doesn't really like her, but she's hanging out with her. And then one night they're hanging out and her friend actually dies uh, from suffocating on a pancake. And Juniper steals her manuscript for her newest book and she edits it and rewrites certain parts and then publishes it as her own work. And where the added layers come in is that her friend was Chinese American, while Juniper is white and doesn't have any Chinese in her. But the book is about Chinese people in China and her publishing company suggests that she uses her middle name, which is Song, kind of an Asian sounding name. And so now you have Juniper Song releasing a book about Chinese people and everyone thinks that she's Asian, but she's not. And this book does such a great job at pulling you back and forth because the main character is trying to convince you that what she is doing is right and she's, she's in the right and she's not doing anything wrong and it's the world that's wrong. And then all these other characters are coming in and they're, you know, arguing that she is the one who's doing something wrong and it's just pulling you back and forth and you gain like a little bit of sympathy for her and then you just lose all of it. <laughs> and then <laughs> it's just very interesting. And RF Kuang is very good at writing this type of character. And there is a similar one in Babel and it's just very thought provoking, I think. This book really had me at the edge of my seat. I am not sure off the top of my head what genre this book would be categorized as because it is literary fiction, but I would also say it's a thriller. It's very exciting at times. Honestly, starting off May strong because I really, really liked this book and, you know, 
I've never read an RF Kuang book I didn't like, so there is that. <laughs> to decorate the spread, I went with yellow because the cover is completely yellow. And I used some of my own sunflower stickers, some from 2022 and 2023, because I've done a couple of sunflower themes before, both in my shop and in my bullet journal, so on Patreon as well. There are also some butterflies. I used some of the alphabet stickers that I have in my shop. And then the sunflower washi tape is from BGM. And the yellow grid washi tape, I can't remember where it is from, but I'm pretty sure it might be from somewhere like Aliexpress. This is one of those books I would love to discuss in a book club because there is just so much to talk about with this book. There, there are so many dimensions and so many layers and if you read this book I would love to hear your opinions in the comment section below if you liked it or not, why, why not? Because yeah, like I said, this is one of those books that you can discuss at length. The next book I read in May was Exit Strategy by Martha Wells. I'm continuing reading the Murderbot Diaries and this one was the last novella before the first full-length novel, although one of you guys informed me that there is another novella that actually takes place in between Exit Strategy and the first full-length novel, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna read the books in their publication order or in the chronological order. Either way, I'm really excited because turns out it's not just one full-length novel in the series, there is a second full-length novel, so um, I guess I'm set for the summer. <laughs> Since this is the fourth novella of the series, it is now getting harder and harder to talk about the books without spoiling anything. So I don't want to talk very much about what happens in this novella, and I'll talk more about the decoration because the decoration is really pretty, and I think we've established already that I love these books, and I love Martha Wells, and I think that The Murderbot Diaries is... Um, a literary genius or is it Martha Wells who's a literary genius <laughs> I just really enjoy the story and I'm so happy that there are so many novellas and novels to go through because the story just keeps going and it's not in a bad way because sometimes you know you have a, a book series and it just keeps on going forever and uh, just desperately trying to to keep going but this one doesn't feel that way and i think it's because of all the novellas so there's a lot of short stories and that kind of means that the shelf life is a little bit longer for the murderbot diaries i think you can see in the sidebar that i used a star rating stamp it's a silicone stamp this one is from bgm i really like it it came with a lot of other fun stamps and i am really happy to be using it in my journal i also I also have heart and star writing stickers that I made for my shop and I've been using those too but sometimes you want the stamp look and other times you want the sticker look you know for decoration I went with yellow again the book cover for this book is mostly like gray and black but the name of the author Martha Wells is in yellow so I decided to grab on to that and I made the spread mostly yellow but also blue didn't want it to be too similar to the spread for yellow face so that's why I included the blue and I got to use some of the stationery from Paper Monogatari's summer collection last year it has a lot of lemons and flowers and it's just really pretty and it has all these pretty blue details. The girl sticker is one of my own. This one I drew for my patrons, so it's part of one of the journaling kits that is over on my Patreon. I think it's really fun that at this point my Patreon page is a huge gallery of lots of journaling kits because I don't remove them anymore, so once you join on a tier that gives you a journaling kit, you have access to almost all the journaling kits I've ever made. And now that's several years worth of journaling kits. And I think that's really cool. And you can clearly see how my style has developed and my skills also in making the journaling kits. And maybe that's more fun for me than for you, but I, I really like that. And it's really fun for me to see. 
The quote I chose for the spread says, It would have been hilarious if I wasn't about to die. Parentheses, it was still a little hilarious. And <laughs> this just really encompasses the writing style of these books. It's just really funny and I wouldn't say simple, but it's like, it's straightforward because it's a robot telling the story. And I really, really enjoy that. I used my Muji gel pen in the size 0.5 to write on the spread and I actually used all of this pen. So it was a good thing that I was going to Japan because then I could get more because they don't sell Muji pens in Norway. And the easiest way to get them here is probably ordering them online, ordering them from Amazon or from Muji in the UK. But the shipping just gets really expensive and the taxes as well. So since I'm in Japan anyway, I am restocking my Muji gel pen storage, I guess. <laughs> the next book I read is technically not a book, I guess. This is the fifth volume of Rinne. This is a Japanese manga by Takahashi Rumiko. She is a genius. She also made Inuyasha, she made Ranma, she made Urusei Yatsura, and I've been slowly reading this manga. I used to absolutely love manga. I would spend all of my pocket money on it. When I was in middle school and also in high school, my well in middle school my parents would give me an allowance kind of for doing chores and I would spend all of it on manga and books. In high school I got a job in my first year of high school and I would spend all of that money also on manga and books. And so <laughs> I read a lot of manga and there was this one store in my city that sold manga in English and I just devoured them. And that means I had quite a big collection of manga and when I moved out of my parents house when I was 19, I, well, I finished high school and then I stayed with my parents for a little over half a year when I was working and saving up money and then I moved to Japan. And before I left, I just cleared out my room at my parents house i didn't have any intention of moving back there ever because not because my parents are bad parents <laughs> they're really great parents but i just knew that i wanted to have my own space from then on but as a 19 year old my brain wasn't maybe working that well because i got rid of a lot of stuff instead of just putting it in storage like in the attic at my parents house for example i got rid of a lot of stuff like i sold or gave away or threw out a bunch of stuff so i actually didn't keep my enormous manga collection because it took up so much space like it would have taken so many boxes to keep all of it and now looking back i do regret it because it was a pretty substantial collection and there are some of those mangas that i I would have enjoyed reading again now. Inuyasha and Fruits Basket, for example. But then again, even if I had them now, the space they take up would still be a little bit of a problem. So that's why I'm reading this manga as an ebook. I'm reading it on my Kindle. Sadly, it does mean that I have to buy it from Amazon, but I just I really enjoy reading them on my Kindle. It's so nice and it's amazing to be able to have all of those manga volumes just on that little e-reader. I absolutely love my Kindle. Probably the best purchase I made as a reader, like for me at least, I really like reading on it. I don't mind that it doesn't feel exactly like a book. I think it's a lot more convenient and it makes it so that I read more because it's so easy to just slip the Kindle into my bag if I'm going out and I'm, I can read it on public transport. I mean, if you live in Oslo, you will take a lot of public transport. And I really mm, would much rather want to spend that time on my Kindle than on my phone, you know? Anyway, for this spread, I used my own stickers that I made for my patrons in May. This was part of the May Happy Mail, also themed for June, because this is the theme that I went for in my June setup in my bullet journal. I also used these Japanese hiragana stickers that one of you guys sent to me all the way from Hawaii and they are really great and I really enjoyed using them in this spread. As you can see, I covered the left side of the spread completely with a picture from the manga, not from volume 5, but 
some other volume. I literally just googled it in the manga and this came up and I printed it out. <laughs> I think that the spread turned out nice and the reason I did it this way is because it, since it is a manga, I don't have that much to say for each volume, but I still want to record it in my reading journal. Now let's move on to the next book I read in May. This is The Dragon's Promise by Elizabeth Lim. I did talk about this in my previous reading journal video because I read the first book of this duology back in April, which is called The Six Crimson Cranes, and this is the sequel to that book. I didn't particularly enjoy this one very much. I mean, I already knew from reading Six Crimson Cranes that I probably wasn't the target audience for this book. It feels very young adult. I think it is young adult. But just the promise of more dragons kept me reading because I really wanted to read about more dragons. I wanted to read more about Seryu, the dragon from the first book. And, you know, I was curious to see where it would go. Sadly, I have to say I was a bit disappointed. There weren't nearly as much dragon stuff as the title kind of promised. <laughs> and that really disappointed me. I felt like the story, and this is maybe gonna be a, a few spoilers here, so turn off the sound if you want to know nothing about this, because this is a sequel and it's hard to talk about it without spoiling anything. But basically, I felt like the story kind of went in weird directions. Like instead of sticking to the plot, it kind of developed into more stuff like it could have stuck to the dragon plot but instead suddenly there's all these demons and the villain is i don't know it just felt a little bit all over the place and i didn't enjoy that i felt like it was kind of going in a very different direction than what it should have done if that makes sense i mean after the first what quarter of the book there were no more dragons <laughs> and Seryu doesn't show up almost at all and I I guess that's something that happened in the first book as well like Seryu has to stay away from her or whatever but then suddenly they try to introduce this love triangle with Seryu and it's that's just really weird. I also feel like all the characters kind of lost their personalities in the sequel because they just don't behave or show their personality in the same way in this book and everyone is so overprotective and that's uh, quite annoying for me to read. <laughs> so again I stand by what I said after reading the first book uh, that it could have just been a standalone book. It really didn't need a sequel. I think that it should have just been one book. Now I see that there is also a third book which is kind of a prequel and I don't think I'll be reading that. I don't think that this book series is for me necessarily but the colors of the cover was really pretty and inspired this spread which I think turned out really nice. So at least there is that. I hate to end the video on a negative note <laughs> but the last book included in my May reading journal spreads is The Atlas Complex by Olivia Blake. This is the third book in this series and at, at the time that I'm recording this I actually haven't finished this book. I am trying to finish it. It's going really slow. I've been trying to read this book since what February? It's going real slow and the reason is I really don't like this book as at all. There are so many things I don't enjoy about this book. It was hard enough to get through the second book. This third book is just, it's really hard. The first book I thought it, it had potential and there were still things that I, you know, wanted to figure out. But this third book is just, I don't know, this is, this trilogy is just not for me. I feel like <laughs> it's trying to be so philosophical and profound, but it's just a bunch of dialogue that is going nowhere. It's just characters talking to each other and, you know, trying to be so philosophical about the world, but it's just nonsense, in my opinion. The characters are not likable, but also it's like the books try to build up so much character, like so much personality for this these characters, but 
what I am left with is just a lack of personality. I feel like what they do, it doesn't really matter. It could have been any of the characters. And uh, you guys might disagree with me and that's totally fine. And I would love to hear your opinions because if you like this book series, I would love to hear why because I wanted to like these books. <laughs> I just really can't. They're so slow and so boring. And I have, I guess, around a third left of this book as I'm recording this and I'm trying to finish it. And I thought I would just make this spread anyway and just fill it with my thoughts on the book so far. I don't normally do this, but I, I did it this once kind of to kick myself into gear and make me finish the book. But it's been, it's been really hard. I was really close to just quitting the second book and I've been really close to just quitting the third book so many times and still I keep, I keep reading it and I don't know why. I think it is a little bit dangerous for me to talk about this book and make this spread before I finished it because something could still happen to change my mind. There could still be an amazing plot twist that makes all of this make sense and kind of redeem the book series. At the same time though, when it's so hard to get through <laughs> the books, maybe they aren't redeemable, at least in, in my opinion, for me. This is just my personal opinion. At least I like how the spread turned out. The cover is uh, completely blue, so I used some blue stickers for this, some blue washi tape. I used my own butterfly and rainy day sticker sheets. The blue butterflies are no longer for sale actually because it's an older sheet and I just used one that I had already started using. I have a big collection of sticker sheets that I've partly used of my own stickers. So I tried to use up those when I can. So I combined these with some hydrangea washi tape and stickers from Notebook Therapy and also from BGM. And I think that it turned out quite nice. And I like, I like the spread, just not the book. And I covered up the quotes area because I just didn't really have anything that I wanted to quote from this book. <laughs> and there you have it, all of my reading journal entries for May. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching it all the way to the end. Put a fish emoji in your comment to let me know that you watched all of it. That always makes me very happy. If you read any of these books yourself, I would love to hear your opinions on them in the comments below. So just let me know if you have any opinions, anything that you disagree with me on or agree with me, both are very welcome. I used a lot of my own stickers in these spreads, so a little shout out to uh, me <laughs> and my shop. It was actually unintentional, it just happened that way. But um, yeah, check out my shop. I have stickers and other stuff. So I'll put a link to that in the description box below. Also check out my Patreon if you're interested in supporting me in any way. That is probably the easiest way to do that. I appreciate each and every one of you. An extra big thank you to my patrons, of course. You guys are awesome. And with that, I think I will call it good for now. I hope that you're all having a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye!